Vue.js is probably one of the most flexible JavaScript frameworks out there. It started as an alternative to AngularJS, but was able to reinvent itself with its version 2 and then with its version 3. In the meantime, it became a force to reckon with and managed to climb to the top of a lot of rankings. It is usually closely following React and Angular in popularity, even though it is not backed by a company such as Google or Facebook. Since the beginning, one of Vue's main goals was to be a lightweight powerful solution for progressive enhancement approaches. In recent years, with the help of tools such as Astro, or quick, the front-end space is slowly shifting towards the plain old approach of delivering fast HTML pages and then sprinkle some JavaScript behavior on top, lazily, only when needed. To this extent, the Vue team came up with Petit Vue, an 8KB lightweight alternative design to allow you to easily add behavior to static pages rendered on the server. In the next few minutes, we'll do just that. In a statically generated HTML page, using Vue's intuitive API, we'll add the needed behavior to allow users to select various options and add products into a shopping cart. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Our work will be done in the index.html and index.js files. I am importing the createapp function from the Petit View module, and this is what we'll use to mount our app to the DOM. As an FYI, Petit View is very similar to Alpine.js, so we can accomplish all the work that we are doing directly in the HTML without a separate JS file. However, based on my experience, I'm going to still maintain some separation of concerns because this will help you down the road when you'll need to maintain this code. Note that my index.js file is imported as a module in the header of the HTML page. Be careful to also use the defer attribute to ensure that all the HTML is ready before the view code is executed. Okay. So let's start with something easy. In the object passed to the createapp function, we can define state and behavior. As a small use case, we'll allow our users to toggle between a light and a dark theme. Vue comes with an easy way that allows you to bind attributes and classes to state values. We are adding a dark class to the document body based on the dark boolean flag, and then we'll register a non-click event, which we'll call the toggle function we defined a bit earlier. Using the bit text, we can conditionally render the button label as well. We'll explore more ways to conditionally render content into the DOM in just a second. I mentioned a bit earlier the AlpineJS framework. In the top right corner, you'll find a video where I'm adding the same behavior in the same HTML structure using that library. It could be a useful exercise to compare the similar approaches Petit View and Alpine have, and then decide which one is the better alternative. Just like in all libraries, Petit View offers some lifecycle hooks, such as the onMounted, which will allow you to run code at specific times. Next, we'll work on the actual shopping cart implementation. Back in the setup object, I'll start by defining a cart array. Then, I will add some helper functions, which will simplify our work on the HTML side of things. I'll need a cart size getter to easily render the number of objects added to the cart. The isCartEmpty getter will just conveniently allow us to write concise conditionally rendering rules a bit later. Finally, the addProduct method will be called from the HTML to update the cart. Note that this is a rather naive implementation. In a real world scenario, your products would have a unique ID and any cart interaction should also be logged on a backend service for various business logic purposes. Back in the HTML, we'll register the addProduct function as a click event handler for the products rendered on the right sidebar. Note that some event handlers can have modifiers to alter their default behavior. In our case, I'm making sure that the handler will be called only once when the event is first fired. To see some results in the UI, we'll jump to the cart button and in there we'll conditionally render the items count based on the vShow tag. As a quick side note, many frameworks, view included, offer you two separate ways of showing or hiding content in the DOM. Using the vif tag, the element will be fully added or removed from the DOM. Using the vShow, the element will always stay in the DOM and it will be displayed or hidden based on CSS rules. You can define custom delimiters in your view app so that it's easier for you to render text into the DOM if you feel like the vText attribute is not really your style. You might have noticed that whenever the page is refreshed, some HTML content and view tags are flickering. This is because the petite view code was not executed yet. In order to avoid this behavior, we can use the vclock tag on the body element. This tag will be present in the DOM until the view app is loaded loaded and ready to run. At that time, the tag will be automatically removed from the DOM. Adding a display none CSS rule on the vcloak attribute will make sure that the page will be visually hidden until your deferred view code is executed. A core functionality in front-end development is the ability to capture input data from the user in a declarative manner. V offers you two-way data binding support with the help of the vModel tag. This will link the user input to a reactive state value inside the view object. 
Next, I'll register on click events for the color options and I will also persist the user's decision in the view object state. It's always a good practice to outline user actions in a visible manner in the UI and will add a selected class for the active color. So, when a customer will click on the add to cart button, its quantity and color selection will also be added in the cart. You can see that with just a few lines of code, we are able to add all the necessary behavior needed in our page. Note, however, that libraries such as Petit View or Alpine have very specific use cases. They are focused on progressive enhancements and are best used in existing projects following the classical server-side rendering approach using libraries such as Rails or Django. It's also worth mentioning that tools such as Astro offer a modern solution for multi-page applications, enabling you both the performance of server-side rendering and the great user experience of powerful JavaScript running in the browser. Back to our code, when the user toggles the cart button, I want to iterate over the added products and render them into a dropdown. This can be achieved easily using the HTML special template tag and views v4 directive. This is a demo, so we'll just add the product quantity and name in here. In the real world, however, shopping carts require a pretty complex user experience, with things like cart removal and quantity changes being pretty much a must-have. Back in the index.js file, let's add a boolean flag based on which we can display a visual confirmation message when the product is added in the cart. We can use a set timeout function to auto-hide the message after a couple of seconds. In the template, using the vshow, we'll be able to easily show or hide this message. So, Petit View is pretty powerful when it comes to progressive enhancement. It overlaps with Alpine quite a lot and they don't make a secret out of this. Both libraries offer pretty much the same features, but the advantage of Petit View is a known API if you already worked with View in previous projects. If you've made it this far, please consider liking this video and subscribing to the channel. Thank you for watching.